Joining me on the podcast is Matt Henderson. He's the superintendent for Crestline Schools. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, wow, it's been kind of a kind of a unique year this year, right? With everything going on and uh, with, with COVID and all that. And I know that's a constant thing you guys deal with every day, right? Every day, it's it's, it's it presents a new challenge. Uh, we're, we're getting more and more used to it, but but the the thing we have the most difficulty overcoming is you know when our staff is out and finding an adequate number of subs to fill those positions so that we can you know, keep the building open and, and occupy the building safely. Uh, make sure we have enough adults to monitor kids mm -hmm. and help the operation. That, that's the challenging part for us. That and, and even like the support staff too, like bus drivers and all that too, right? Bus drivers, right. cooks, mm -hmm. aides, secretaries, teachers, all, all of it. That, you know, there's, there's a tremendous need, not, not only in our district, but in most districts I think would, would express that same uh, issue as, as do we, are there enough qualified folks out there who are willing to serve as substitutes regardless of what mm -hmm. the area is? Uh, and right now we're finding just not enough people out there wow. willing to do that. It's a challenge, isn't it? It is. It is. What's happening at the schools? I mean, you're halfway through the year pretty much, right? Halfway through the year, we, are, um, we, we, we began at the start of January, second semester. And so uh, we've, we've, been, we've had to go remote a few times mm -hmm. this year, which, which we're getting. We have a better understanding of how that should look. It's not ideal. It's not how we're set up as a school district. We, we prefer to have kids in the building, but, uh, but we are, our families and students and teachers have adapted pretty well to that. Um, we, we are, you know, in the middle of winter sports season and, mm -hmm. and our, our boys and girls basketball teams, middle school boys and girls teams um, competing. We're able to compete um, and, and transport kids to events and, and have them have that, that sort of normal part of, the, right, of their right. experience. Uh, bowling teams uh, as well. Those are the those are the winter sports that we have, and uh, so those kids are able to compete and feel you know feel a little bit of that that camaraderie and that mm -hmm. competition, which is good for uh, good for you know school pride and, and mm -hmm. for them. And um, so those things are going on. And, and, and academically, you know, our teachers are um, we're in that preparation mode now, kind of counting down the the last couple months before state testing kicks mm -hmm. off. So. Teachers are focusing heavily on making sure that uh, you know students that were still catching up with uh, from when the pandemic hit and we were on everybody was remote. We're still mm -hmm. catching up some areas there, um, but uh, our teachers are working very hard doing that. So pretty much that that's business as usual right now. Is we're really heavily focusing on um, the academic side of things, but also making sure kids can be involved and, and, and we, we were supporting them in their extracurricular activities as well. Yeah, and anything changed this year? I mean, like because of COVID, did you guys have to drop anything or? No, we, we've, we've, the only thing that's really different mm -hmm. this year is again, it's posing, there, there's more challenges in on the classified staff side of things in terms of finding substitutes. Mm -hmm. So we're finding, you know, bus driver. We 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 are we always knew this. You know, bus drivers, cooks, secretaries, educational aides, the custodians. All of them. All of those folks are as essential as a teacher mm -hmm. to making sure we can operate the district. And so, we're we're struggling finding subs in those areas. We, we have a larger number of teaching subs than we had a year ago at this time mm -hmm. per se. But um, but again, we need all of that. We need all the every area of the operation. You know, qualified quality people operating it uh, in order for us to be able to have in-person classes. So that's that's been mm -hmm. the real challenge this year. I know that uh, you guys want to keep the kids in class as much as possible, right? Yes, as much as possible. Well, that's again, that's how we're public school districts are set up like mm -hmm. ours. We we prefer to have the kids in front of the teacher, interacting with their with their peers, their grade level peers, but the teachers have direct contact with them for support for. Mm -hmm. um, extra help or mm -hmm. motivation, all of that um, fits into the whole, you know, the social emotional part of school, all of that, we do our best work when we're all together. Right. What else is happening at the schools? We've got, um, I'm not sure when this is airing, we're hosting tomorrow, Wednesday, January 26th at 7 o'clock, we're hosting a Crest, Celebrate Crestline mm -hmm. event. Um, we're a part of that along with the Crestline Community Development Team, United Way, uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, representing folks representing those different um, those different groups uh, meeting at the cafeteria uh, on Wednesday night and talking mm -hmm. about what's going on in Crestline what's going well what are we involved in 
what's uh, the future look like? How are we working together in those the, the different areas in support of making uh, continuing the Crestline comeback and, and, and mm -hmm. growing that growing our community over there. So that's that's a, a big event for us tomorrow night on like I said January 26th. Um, you know we've got uh, and on Thursday the 27th that evening our board of education we're interviewing we have an open board position uh, and we're interviewing uh, candidates who have applied mm -hmm. and expressed interest in being our, our, our fifth board member. So those interviews are happening. It's critically important that we get that person in place uh, so they can help, um, you know, help with the governance of the school district mm -hmm. and um, help us set goals and, and figure out what 2022 is going to look like for the school district. So those are two pretty important things that are happening uh, in the near future for us. When do you guys start planning for the new year? Or do you do that all the time? Yeah, so the superintendent, superintendent administrative team and the board, we kind of think, uh, we, we're kind of plan like a year, a year and a half mm -hmm. in advance of things, what we think of. Um, in terms of like the school district calendar, now's the time that we, we you know, we publish the school district calendar so, so people are aware of what, mm -hmm. the, what the school year looks like. But even farther down the road when we think of, okay, what do we need with curriculum purchases? What do we know that needs to happen in terms of the physical building upgrades? Which, which systems need repaired, mm -hmm. replaced? You know, we're thinking a little bit longer term down the road um, than in the present moment. We've, we've spent a lot of the past almost two years now being reactive to this, um, to this pandemic, right. but now we're, 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 we try to still settle in into the sort of common sense planning, looking ahead of what are we putting in place to make sure our students have the very best experience while they're in our school building. You guys probably have to change the way you clean everything too, don't you? Yeah, we, we, all, we clean everything, double clean everything. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, sanitizers, backpack sanitizers that we utilize in the bus, our busing and, and as well as classrooms. Um, you know, we, we try to make sure that um, uh, we, we provide, um, you know, things for students that they can use, you know, uh, plenty of hand sanitizer and soap sure. and wipes and things like that. And uh, for, for people who choose to, choose to wear it, that we have masks and, and, mm -hmm. and, and face shields and things like that available for them. But yeah, we try to stay on top of cleaning as much as possible and, and so that, uh, again, our goal is to be in the building all the time. Is this sort of mask optional right now? Or? Yeah, we're mask yeah. optional, mm -hmm. uh, highly recommended uh, mm -hmm. for, um, for students and staff. We have, uh, the, with some of the CDC guideline changes, we have students that are, are able to be in the building mm -hmm. as long as they choose to wear a mask during a certain number of days. Um, and you see, we see a lot more kids doing that now. Yeah. Uh, staff as well, and vaccination again, it's, vaccinations are optional as well. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, but on, on our school district transportation, the masks are still required okay. when you're on our when our school. That's buses. kind of a that's kind of a gov that's, that, that that's a law that you have to go by, right? Yeah, that comes down from the federal government, yeah. Department of Transportation. The way buses are class school buses are classified and falls under the Department of Transportation. So we're following federal guidance on that. But but in terms of masking in the building, that's that's been um, local mm -hmm. local boards of education's decision. It's probably helped not having kids out for those ten days because I know the kids. I mean, that's a long time to be out of school, and if they're able to get back in the classroom, that's got to help things out a little bit. Yeah, that's just, there's nothing like being in the room mm -hmm. with the teacher. There's nothing like being in the room with your friends, being around, uh, you know, the adults in the district that care for you. It's just different. It's, it's, that, that's the way, that's the way public education, mm -hmm. in my opinion, that's the way public mm -hmm. education is supposed to look. So when's the school year end this year? So where our last day of school is uh, May 27th, mm -hmm. which is also uh, our graduation day. Uh, and then the teachers have a work day the Tuesday after uh, Memorial Day there. And yeah. things are then are off summer vacation and, and those types of things. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a, um, we'll have a summer, uh, summer school session through most of, uh, through the summer for kids that need you know, some extra support. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, we're going to have that program in place. Get get quality teachers involved with that. But uh, yeah, we're it's it's you know we're we're in the second semester, almost into January, and the school year has flown by despite all the challenges. Mm -hmm. 
weekend. It'll be it'll be graduation time before you know it. Guys are saying it's going to get here before you know it. Right. right. It goes pretty fast, doesn't it? It does. seems like at least the last half of the year. My wife's a teacher, so I know it seems like the last half of the year just flies by. It doesn't does. It? Yeah. Well, and and when folks like myself who work uh-huh. year round, it's 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 just it's just a whirlwind right. from from month to month to month. It just time it's just constantly moving. So you don't get the summers off, do you? No, I don't think so. I get I, I get vacation days. Yeah. And I spend a lot of those days with my family, but right. yeah, it's it's uh, we're working around, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way because you gotta you gotta have your thumb on everything and sure. understand what's going on year round as a superintendent. Well, thank you, thank you, Matt, so much for coming in today. Uh, great to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.